So we're gonna just put in a few rotation keyframes, nothing too fancy. Doesn't look all that good right about now, so we need to add in a, some movement. So I'll move this to rent a bit of a random place there in between all of the rotation keyframes. We'll just add some random movement. The more random it is, the better, of course, like always. Um, something like that. And once we add in our camera motion, it'll look a bit better. I want to do the same thing with the chest here, the actual chest. Now we can animate this guy by himself. I also want when the chest pops open, I kind of want it to do a bit of a squash, squash and stretch effect, which is pretty much uh, what they use in cartoons a lot um, to to make everything look a bit more cartoony. So we're, in, we're adding a scaling in uh, a, a keyframe on the key, keyframe five, and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll insert another scaling and go in between those, so on key, key from 10. And we'll stretch, hit S, and scale that on the Z axis, and then insert a scaling keyframe. So now when it pops up, it kind of does this really cool stretching effect that, that is uh, barely noticeable, but it's just there enough. We might do that a little bit more, something like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, so when, when it comes back down, of course, I also want it to squ squash itself back down. But that one will be a bit shorter, so we'll go to about keyframe 23, scaling, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and we'll go back, and then we'll scale it uh, down. Uh, so now we have this kind of effect. I like that. And then when it comes back up, kind of have it come back up a little bit more. Something like that. This is really bouncy and flexible. Um, kind of aspect to the te to the chest, which is really nice. I kind of want the camera to rotate around, so we'll delete that keyframe. I don't know why that's there. So with the camera selected, I kind of want it to rotate around the the chest and the text. Um, so I'll add in a Shift A, um, and we'll do Curve and select Circle. We'll scale that up to about where the camera is right now. Anyway, turn automatic keyframing off and remove that keyframe that it just added. All right, so with our camera selected, we'll move that to about right there in the center again. So with our camera selected, we're going to add a object constraint in the constraints tab up here. And we'll select a damped track. And we'll set the target to the Bezier uh, uh, circle. So now what this does is it makes it face down. So we hit negative Z to make that face to the, towards the center. Now if we move this, you can tell that it will always stay on the center of the circle so wherever you move this to it always stay right there which is nice um, so that's what we needed so now if I move this camera uh, down a little bit when it starts and we'll add automatic keyframing in once again um, I'm just gonna let this animation play and we'll move the camera while it's playing so we're gonna hit play and we'll move the the camera while it's playing something like that and then we'll just have it go into the the chest and about right there we will cut the animation off so we will only go to about frame 70 uh, frame 69, that's fine. Frame 69, and then we will move that about right there. But as you can tell, the camera's motion is a bit um, is a bit jerky. Um, so we're going to start this animation. We're going to drag open our little triangle back, back, back there and open Dope Sheet. And we'll select all of our, we'll, we'll downsize all of these, and we'll select all of our camera uh, keyframes. So we'll select all of these and deselect anything that's not a camera keyframe. We'll move those to the zero keyframe. So now we have our animation starting like this and going all the way through. Um, but I want to rotate this. I want to move the the curve down a bit because that's not in the center. So we'll move that about right there. And it'll be good just like that. And I might move the into frame 60 now that we move the keyframes over so now our camera's motion is a bit jerky still um, so it's not just how I want it so we'll open the graph editor and we'll select everything by double tapping a and we'll hit uh, space and we'll type in smooth uh, and select smooth keys now if we keep doing this over and over again so we hit space smooth keys we can hit alt o over and over again to smooth out the keyframe so we hit alt o alt o alt o alt o as you can tell that's smoothing that out a bit so now our camera's motion should be a bit more smooth so if we play this back that's way 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 more smooth that's really nice um so i kind of wanted to go into the text word so let's move the text over a bit uh right there and we'll move that to about there and we'll also rotate it so when it comes into the, the chest, it, the, the text kind of moves into the way. And we'll also move it into the camera. So move it about about like right right there and rotate it a bit. Up, and we'll rotate it a bit right there. So now it comes into the into the camera. 
So now in our in our post editing, you know, in our editor of choice, we can always fade that out or have it go to black or whatever. But uh, that that's this is pretty much almost done. We got to set up a few more things. I really want to set up the background now, so we can use nodes, change the background to uh, let's do let's select, select ambient occlusion. By the way, so now if we render, if we get this quick render, you can tell that that's what that looks like finally. And when the chest comes in, I kind of want the camera to get a bit closer to it so what we'll do is i'll change the focal length so we hit hover our cursor over the focal length and hit i and then go one two three four five and then we'll zoom that in to about 64.35 and then we'll see what it looks like yeah i think i like that um, but the problem is is now the camera is just a bit too low so we'll move up the bezier curve again so now it goes up to about right there yeah, I like that. And then it, when it comes up, it needs to come up a bit more right there. And then the text goes into it, something like that. And I also want to make the camera zoom in when it comes in like that. So we'll go to 55, hover our cursor over focal length, I, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll zoom it in even more. So about right there. And I want to move the Bezier curve on the last frame to about right there. So it's covering the, the camera's view with the E. So now... I really like the way that looks. I think that is going to be it. We're turning on motion blur uh, just to see what this looks like a bit better. And we'll turn it to about right there. I think that looks good. We'll give a quick render. I think that looks pretty good for our Minecraft intro. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Um, there was a couple more things we could do with this. We can add in particles to the text, of course. You would hit uh, Alt C, curve from. Uh, mesh from curve meta surf text and then you would add in your particles i'll just do that really really quickly we'll add in 200 particles this video is going to be a little bit longer um than i want it to be but that's fine uh we'll add in about 200 particles i'm gonna go through this really really quickly and right as the text pops up so about right on keyframe 10 key start on 10 and we'll start and we'll end on 11 so it just pops all the uh particles out at the same time we'll add in a cube um, and drag that to about right there, remove the keyframe, turn off uh, auto keyframing. Select our text again and go to object, dupli object, and we'll select cube, tick, tick rotation, random size, and we'll see what, how big those are. Those are way too big. <laughs> um, we'll do something like that. Um, and we will also turn up the random to about five in velocity and play that. Yeah, I like that. Um, we'll also turn the gravity completely off so they just float out into space something like that give the scene a bit more depth and we will also turn on drag to about uh, 0 0.01 so it looks like uh, more than that 0 0.05 yeah I like that so now we have a bit more depth maybe 1000 I should have just left it on what it was um, so now uh, I want to actually change this to group. I want to change the particles to group and I'll add a couple different particle colors. So we'll add in a blue, of course, and then we'll add in, we'll duplicate that with shift D, move it over and we'll hit two just to make a new material. And then we'll change that to green, duplicate, hit two. So we'll group all of these together. Um, select all of them uh, with uh, the B button, hit B and then select all those. And then uh, we'll hit new group in relation. Select our text again, and we'll go back to the particles tab and hit select the only group that we have, which is the the particles we just made. Make sure that random size is on, yeah. So now if we give this a quick render, we'll have a bunch of different colors, which is gonna look super, super awesome. Something like that, really colorful, nice. And really quickly, I wanna add in some depth of field. So I'm gonna select our camera, scroll down to focus, and just select the text right there. So our radius is going to be 0.2. So now if I give this a quick render, you'll be able to tell everything that's not close to the camera is uh, depth of fielded out. So we might do point, uh, 0.2 looks good. Maybe 0.3. That might be a bit much. Yeah, let's do 0.2. I like 0.2 the way that looks. Um, so that looks good uh, right there. So uh, that is going to be it for this, for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you need to know about the render settings, always check out my video on render settings. I'll post that in the description. I'll actually put a card up on the screen right now. See you guys in the next video. Hope this helped you. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, bye.